All right, all right, all right. That would be my impression of Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> this, however, is my Zygopetalum Luisendorf, and she is growing new roots, and I'm very excited to be able to repot her today together with you. This pot is in dire straits, not because the orchid is, but it's been a long, long time since I did that video where we had a rotting pseudobulb and you can see its status quo today. Yeah, I just said the orchid is not in dire straits, but I don't like the spotting. I'm working with zygos now in a different way. I'm trying to protect them a little bit more from the cold that they can tolerate. And for that reason, I bring them into the grow space every night, but I wonder if there's always a little bit of condensation on their leaves that's causing this spotting anyway new growth we've got to repot you can see i've still got my tissue from when we did that major major cut into the pseudobulb that is filled with cinnamon which i didn't want to leak into the media so this is going to be a little bit of a rejuvenation now what i really really want to do actually is go hard and rough on the zygopetalum root system one day today is not the day because this orchid needs to recover there's too much going on i don't want it to collapse on me but when we get to repotting the Zygopetalum Trozy Blue, she's a bit more vigorous. When we repot that one, I am going into that root system hard. And the reason I keep saying it that way is because notoriously famous for very finicky and volatile root system handling, rough handling, zygos will dump the root system, will struggle, and then they will be very set back. But I want to do that with my Trozy Blue because every once in a while you do have to do some kind of a form of rejuvenation no matter the diva attributes of an orchid. But you want to do it with a strong orchid? That is not the case with my Luisendorf. But we can at least get rid of the broken pot, get rid of this tissue, get her out of the pot, maybe into a bigger pot. It all depends on what we're going to see in the pot once we get her out of the pot. That is a lot of pottying around, so let's get to repotting. <laughs> okay, she has been soaking in calcium and magnesium, 500 parts per million, because why not? There's some really dull days coming up, and I figured that with a little bit more of the two, she may just be able to cope much, much better. Got some gorgeous root tips right here that I want to protect at all costs. And in order to continue that protection, I prefer to tilt the orchid away from the root tips so that I can avoid as much abrasion and bashing of any root tips as possible. Now the pot doesn't feel as rock hard as I was hoping for. Rock hard is good because that means we've got a good root system in the pot. This has got a little bit too much flex for my liking, but anyway, we'll have a look-see. Let's not be too pessimistic. Yeah. She's making our life very, very easy. <laughs> Not too disappointed. I was expecting a little bit more, but that makes it much easier. You can see how nicely that leka is just falling off. I can be gentle on the root system until, of course, I get to my microfiber and make sure that that pseudobulb with the cinnamon is not going to encroach on anything where I don't want it. So I'm going to be careful and I would like to get that pseudobulb out as well, if possible. But if it means my orchid is going to fall apart into several pieces, yeah, <laughs> that would not be the aim of the game here. Oh, but I'm so glad to get rid of this. I cannot tell you. That makes me happy. Right. Let's see. If I can't get this pseudobulb out, Ooh, more root tips, aren't they gorgeous? <sighs> All right, if I can't get this pseudobulb out, I'm gonna have to put in another tissue. At least it'll be fresher, but yeah, that pseudobulb still has quite a bit of cinnamon in it. So if I just take the top off, maybe we can sort out that problem straight away. It did its job. That's all I needed to do because all this was green and plump when we carved out the rot with a melon cutter. I'll link that video in the description if you're interested to have a look how that operation went. And then of course, I had like a third of the original pseudobulb left, but what energy I had left here before it dried out provided for my orchid. Now, I don't want to rush this, but I'm seeing something here that could be concerning. See that brown? 
it's oh, it's not soft soft maybe it's just old decay so we're gonna leave it but I will keep my eye on it you see that that's probably a pseudobulb just decaying it's not soft it's not oozing onto my fingers so that's my test. Oozy structures, soft structures, something that would leak on my fingers straight away. Uh, that would be a sign we need to do more in this area. But in my case, what I'm seeing here, it's just an old pseudobulb dying back. So, woohoo! Oh, and there's one more thing I wanted to point out as well. If you're growing in inorganic media or you're planning on transitioning into inorganic media, an orchid that was formerly in organic media as in bark you see that bit right there I have no issues leaving bits and pieces of organic media on my root system as I transition the orchid there is no problem mixing the two you want to get off as much as you can but you don't have to be that radical that you're going to affect the health and well-being of the root system you're trying to move into a different setup into different media so that on a side note i hoped it helped somebody and if it did or didn't please would you give this video a like i would appreciate that so so much and if it's your first time here your fifth time here maybe you've been here a long long time but have not subscribed yet please pretty please would you subscribe to the channel i really really <laughs> would appreciate that as well and thank you so much for being here and for watching now my nemesis are all these fern roots i can't stand them not because they're bothering the orchid they bother me so while i'm seeing some of them coming out very easily with my beautiful tweezers here i'm gonna take advantage of that because this has gone so well so far that i can be a little bit more pedantic about what it is that i'm trying to achieve with this repot this orchid was initially in a 15 centimeter pot and I have another 15 centimeter pot even though it looks a bit bigger than the one it came out of. And that is just because the shape is different and I'm thinking that could be big enough for her. But I'm thinking, ooh, maybe not, maybe not because I was just gonna say, I don't wanna bother this orchid for another two, maybe three years. So if you're ever wondering what to do with regards to your media ratio and wicking material, if you're going into self-watering or if you're going to be in organic media, you have to ensure that whatever it is that the orchid likes to have around its roots, that you provide for it by way and the choice of your media. And in my case with the zygos, they love a lot of water. And I have a very dry climate. So the dry climate and the lecker, while the lecker in the pot stays damp all the time, my surfaces dry out very quickly. No bueno for something like a zygo with fussy roots, the dry top layer can result in root tips aborting. You can counteract that in one way by either putting some kind of pebbles that do not have any kind of wicking capacity like Lekka has. You can also, if you are in a dry climate, lower the pseudobulbs a little bit into the media so that the rhizome isn't flush and proud of the surface of the media which means maybe two lecker balls and the pseudobulb would be here coming up like that part down here would still be pseudobulb the rest would be on the up and then all the roots will automatically go into the media or what I do is a little bit of everything. I use very small leka in order to accommodate the water requirements of this orchid. And as I am going into a bigger pot, that now requires two wicks. So the ratio of whatever it is that you are doing and trying to achieve, even if your lifestyle doesn't permit watering every second, every third day during the most warmest months of the year, make sure your media ratio is such that fits with your lifestyle and fits with what the orchid requires. We are going in with small lecker, but I'm going to clear this and magically come back with a clean slate. I'll be right back. We have gone from a 15 centimeter pot now up to an 18 centimeter pot. That's going to make my orchid look a little bit wacko in the pot. It looks like it's going to be oversized, but in the hopes that the care I provide for this orchid, it's not going to look wacko for very, very long. And once zygopedalums get to establishing themselves, they also become more vigorous and grow multiple growths within a single season, which is always awesome. 
So my water here is to provide a little bit of a buffer against the heavy leka that would hit the roots, the belayman, as I pour the leka into the pot when it comes time to do that. Besides, the water will also easily distribute all the leka around the roots when I jiggle the pot. So there's no more bashing going on. Everything is cushioned and the leka will disperse so much easier as well and more evenly. Now, we need the support because zygo spikes can be quite long, as my trozy blue has shown me, and I don't have a support in that pot. And then I just want to check and see that our root tips are still okay. <laughs> oh, it's so satisfying. It's wonderful. There's a lot more that was underneath that I couldn't see before. Love that for us. Awesome. Right, so... My orchid is going in the middle. I'm going to go with the direction of growth that I'm familiar with with her, and that is the one with the spotted leaves. And because I don't want this support to be everywhere but where I want it to be, somewhat centered, not jiggling around, going all askew, we're just going to thread that through the roots again. And then what is very handy as well, we can keep the orchid a little bit lower in the pot. And as we jiggle the pot, we're going to allow the leka to disperse itself in between the root system and raise the orchid up. Marvelous. I just wish I could show you better foliage, but so far I'm loving this. I want to give credit where credit is due. The reason my zygos are surviving is because of Michael McCarthy and his incredible in-depth knowledge and help. Best tips ever when it comes to zygopetalum care. So Michael, thank you very, very much. I know I'm doing a dismal job of getting her to look very, very pretty, but we're working on it. We're working on it. But thank you on behalf of myself, but maybe also the entire orchid community that is lucky enough to read your comments. I'm sure that they are grateful as well for all your invaluable insights, especially when it comes to zygopetalums, because yeah, history shows that a lot of zygos died until Michael McCarthy came along. So muchas gracias, amigo. It's much, much appreciated. Okay, keep filling up. What I don't want to do is create a gridlock of the leka. So we're gonna jiggle, even while the orchid is still lower in the pot. And yes, I'm holding her down so she doesn't rise on me too soon. I'm gonna make sure that she stays in the middle as well. In order to do that, we are going to put more leka in the space where she's starting to have her tendency to lean towards. If we don't want the orchid in that area and we can't exactly hold her in place ourselves because we're busy doing other things with our hands, the leka will always then go in the space to hold her in place where we want her. And you can see she's already coming out of the pot on her own simply because I'm going to keep adjusting her position. So once again, no gridlock. Give it a shake it like a Polaroid picture. And now if she's coming up on her own, I'm okay with it because I am 60% done with filling up with Lekka. We still have some gaps here, but I still want to focus on her position in the back here. She's getting a little too close for my comfort right here. There, I don't like that. I would prefer her a little bit more, scooch her over a little bit more. And if I was doing all of this without the water, I'm doing damage to the velamen of this root system. Using the water as a cushion gives us a lot, a lot of grace. Hello, you're not supposed to be there. In the pot you go. Whoop, there's our root tip. Keep that in our sights now. I won't fill that up just yet because I'm still jiggling. Still jiggling. That root tip has been doing so well. We don't want to mess it up right at the end of our repot. So we're going to scooch her around again and fill up the blanks right here. I was actually going to wipe the leaves before the repot, but when I saw this, I thought, yeah, no. Cold temperatures, high humidity, indoors there's not that much airflow in my grow space, so I thought best just not make them wetter than the environment is already making them. Okay, I've got one little root here still being obnoxious, but that is how it was before. So we've got to cover that up, got to make it happy and re-establish its environment. Just like that. 
And now we're going to check the status quo and drain the pot and see how the lecker settles in and around the root system. I like what I'm seeing. So while there was noise pollution in the background, I've been filling up around here and I'm going to cover that root tip and whatever is starting to grow in the back there as well. I want that covered up as well. Remember I said at the beginning, if you have a dry climate, then it's okay to have the lecker or the media a little bit higher on the pseudobulb level than it's sitting proud on top of the media. Now, it is winter at this point in time of filming and I have much higher humidity this time of year than I normally do. So I'm gonna have to be mindful of what I'm doing and make sure that nothing happens to that growth, that it doesn't rot out. However, the risk reward ratio in this instance is so much higher if I keep it covered. Because if I take my eye off the ball of this orchid, while those root tips are trying to get into the media, and I can very easily take my eye off this orchid because there's a lot of things to focus and concentrate on this time of year, time consuming stuff. The risk of me losing those root tips is higher than me at this point in time losing the entire growth due to possible rot. That is why I've made the decision that I've made. Maybe that thought process will help you out as well to determine what is best when it comes to the level of the media based on your lifestyle, your environment and all these influences. You can make a calculated decision what works best for you and unfortunately in this case the priority what works best for the orchid because losing Using new roots, yeah, we don't want to do that ever. Now, just missing one little detail, and that is the tag. And here she is. <laughs> I'm really pleased with this repot. I hope you enjoyed the video. I appreciate that you stayed to the end. Thank you so, so much. Any questions, you know, the drill down below. And then there's a subscribe. There's also a join button if you want to become an Orchid Ninja. There's the like, and then there's the share button as well. Should you be inclined to say, this video has to be seen by more people. I get to wish you a beautiful day on the condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care, bye. Oh my goodness, I'm back. One more thing, we are gonna put CalMag 500 parts per million back into the reservoir just because the repot itself hasn't changed the conditions we find ourselves in. Calcium and magnesium promotes root growth. Magnesium promotes photosynthesis when the days are overcast like today. Anyway, I'm going to love and leave you now. Bye.